Hey, I'm Alex and today we're going to work on the third problem from PSAT 0 of C50's introduction to programming with Python. The title of this problem is Making Faces, so let's first check out the description, the requirements and then start writing some code. Before there were emoji, there were emoticons, whereby text like this was a happy face and text like this was a sad face. Nowadays, programs tend to convert emoticons to emoji automatically. In a file called faces.py, implement a function called convert that accepts a string as input and returns the same input where any of these are, co are converted to smiley faces and any of these are converted to um, frowning faces. Whether text should be returned unchanged. Then, in the same file, implement a function called main that prompts the user for input, calls convert on that input, and prints the result. You're welcome, but not required to prompt the user explicitly as by passing a string of your own as an argument to input. Be sure to call main at the bottom of your file. Let it begin by creating a directory, which is going to be dedicated to this particular problem. So we go here. I'm, first, I'm going to enter this folder pset um, zero. Let me check how I, I had named it. Pset zero tutorial. You may not have one of these, although I recommend having like a dedicated pset zero um, folder. So I'm now inside of this one, and I want to create a new directory. So make directory mk dir. Um, faces okay and now we want to go inside of this directory so we say change directory to faces cd faces once we are in we can create our file uh, so we can use code and then faces and don't forget the extension dot pi okay now we have the file and Basically, we want to, to have two functions, right? Uh, two functions are mentioned here. The first one is convert, which is going to take the string and replace um, the emoticons with the emoji. And then we have a second one, main, that is going to take the user's input and pass it to the convert function so that it, it can, um, you know, convert the emoticons to emojis. So, we have already done this. Let's just take a quick look at the demo, although I think it's like clear what we have to do, but yeah, this is just the example. And we can just start working on our implementation. So I, I'm actually going to start from the main function because if we don't have the user input, then we cannot test the convert function. I'm going to say def for define a new function, um, which is going to be called main. And inside of it, we first want to take some kind of a message from the user. So message um, equals, and then how do we get the user's input? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. We can just use the input method. And inside of it, we can write some kind of a prompt to the user. We can give some instructions of what exactly we are expecting from them. So we'll say, um, just message colon like this. So this is going to input something and we're going to uh, store it inside of this message variable. And then let's start working on the convert function. And then we're going to come back to our main function to call the convert one. So first we can declare define convert. Uh, so this function is going to accept a string, right? There you go. Accept a string as input. So we can say str or just message. I think message is more descriptive, so message. But please notice that these, um, these names, these variable titles do not have to match. They can be different. You can call this like this or text or anything you want. They do not have to match necessarily. I just think that message is the most clear one. Okay, so we take this message and we want to replace all of these smiley faces with the corresponding smiley emoji. 
So how do you do that? I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. They're actually very similar, but there's, there are still like some slight differences that I want to, to show to you. So the first option is to create two new variables. The first one is the one where we are going to replace um, the smile faces. So uh, we can say smile message, even though that doesn't make that much sense. Um, or smiley message, not sure, smile message, equals. So what do we do? We have already used the replace method, right? We can say, take the message that I've entered as an input message and then replace every smiley face emoticon with mm, the smiley face. Let me take it from here. We can just copy it. There we go, like this, right? So we're saying take the message and replace every occurrence of this string with the smiley emoji. So now let's come here and say um, return smile message. Now, why am I using return instead of print? Because I do have another function that's going to print it, and that's the main function. Here, in, inside of my convert function, I would only like to, um, to manipulate a string, and when, it, when I'm done with that, I just return it back to the main function. So if we come here and say final message or edited message, it doesn't matter that much. And now we call this convert function equals convert and we pass the message. So again, what do we do? First, we take the user's input and we store it inside of a variable called message. Then we are calling the convert function and we are passing this message that we got from the user. So what um, does the convert function do? Well, it takes the message and it replaces all of these emoticons with the smiley um, emoji. Once it's done with that, we return this smile message back as our return value and we store it inside of this final message variable. And what we can do now is we can just come here and say print final message like this. Let's now try to test this function, although we're not um, entirely done because we still haven't replaced the frowning faces, but I just want to test it to make sure that it works as expected. So we can say python3 or just python here, faces.py. And once we run it, okay, nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Because we haven't called our main function. So this thing here is declared, but it has not been executed. So in order to do this, here below all of my functions, we can call main like this. And please don't forget the brackets. Okay, to indicate that you're actually invoking the function. So once we call this main function, let's test it again. Let's enter some kind of a message message like hello and the smiley emoticon all right and now we see that the smiley emoticon has been replaced by a smiley emoji so that works but we still have to replace the frowning face as well right so we can say smile frowning message or something like that equals now we take the previous one so the smile message where we've already replaced the smiles and say dot replace so we're going to this time we're going to replace the frowning face with the corresponding emoji which we can copy from here okay and now we can simply return the final one like the smile frowning message so if we test it again let's copy some tests from here um, yeah, this one is going to be the best. So we, we expect to see one smiley uh, and one frowning face. And there we go. I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but we do have the emojis we needed. Another option that you could use 
is just like not create new variables when you're replacing, but just update the old one. So instead of creating these two variables, smile, smile message and smile frowning message, you could just say message again. Why? Because what's going to happen here, so let me just fix this. So what's going to happen here is you're going to take the, the original message, right? Replace the smiles and store it inside of the same message variable. So you're going to update the old one with the new one. So on line eight, you're doing the same. You're taking the one with the smiles and you're replacing the frowning faces and then you're updating the value of message. So if we run the same, if we run the same, uh, come on, program and enter the same input, the output is the same as well. Okay, the third option which you see people often use, is to chain the two methods. So instead of writing this thing twice, right? Instead of updating the value twice, what you could do is you could say, take the message, replace the smiley face, and then directly replace the frowning face as well. So take the message, replace this string with a smiley face and then immediately replace the frowning emoticon with the frowning emoji and return the message. So if we call the function again using the same input, we we'll see that the output is unchanged. So these are the three options I wanted to show you. Let's now run check 50. Actually going to, okay, there we go. And we can see that we've successfully passed all of the tests. So that was everything for this video. I hope you liked it and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.